Guys, we're just getting right into it. I started early. I didn't even give you any warning. How you doing, everybody? It is Scribbles with Chris Reinick. I'm Chris Reinick. It's me. It's you. We're back. Episode number 46, and I didn't make a number thing. So, uh, I'm not making a new one. Um... Because I'm lazy. Hi, everybody. It seems like it's been forever. Hello the, to the entire Critter crew. Um, there's been a lot of chatter going on in the in the chat about uh, 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 the Lost Boys and Kesho. Yes, you do. I think you do have a problem. It's okay. You're not hurting anybody. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was too busy. We we're having an intervention because Kesho says she watches Lost Boys five times a year. No, okay, so. I didn't do my hair today. This is actually what my hair looks like. So my hair is very curly and um, usually I kind of like beat it in this being straight. So if I just leave it, it just stays this way. So I'm just going with it because I'm getting old and lazy and I don't have anybody to impress even though I stream online to upwards of 21 people. Anyway, how you guys doing? It's Monday. Um, I didn't stream last Thursday because I kind of had, or Thursday? Thursday. I had a, another meeting come up and I completely forgot about it. So, I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry. We're here today. Yeah, sorry, Ethan. Um, some I, I have hair. I can't grow facial hair, so don't complain. You can grow a beard, I can't. So, enjoy that. Um... Yeah, so uh, welcome back from the weekend. It's Monday. Hopefully no one has a case of the Mondays. Uh, but I'm just going to start drawing. Uh, quick Amanda Spade update. Um, she is not going to be in here. She might pop in for a second. She's got a bit of a sore throat. She's having a hard time talking. So um, so she is not going to be on tonight. So it'll be dead quiet. And you guys will have to put up with me trying to keep you entertained this entire time. I know you just come here for Amanda, but um, you'll have to put up with me. Steve, uh, keep your sickness away from me and my house. Amanda has something. And she's having a hard time talking. I don't know how sick she really is, but um, she said she didn't want to talk too much tonight. So, nothing against you guys. Um... Yeah, that's what I'm, I'm hoping also. She's leaving this Thursday to go to Florida. So hopefully she's, um, she's better by then. I'm sure she will be. Yeah, I heard the flu. The, well, you know, the flu's bad every year. But I don't go out of my house a whole lot. My kids do, but um, they, they got sick earlier in the year. Uh, and hopefully they don't get it again and bring it right back to me. Um, <laughs> outbreak. <laughs> Steve, no. Steve, it seems like your house, some of these, it's like per the perpetual den of sickness over there. Like, this, somebody's always sick. Maybe it's because there's 15 gazillion kids over there. <laughs> it's like you're daring the world, like, to make you sick. Bet you can't make me sick. <laughs> Monkeys scare you. Is it because they're like little people? Or because they're like smart and have tiny little grabby hands? <laughs> yes, a critical mass of children. That's a, that's, that is a good way to describe how many <laughs> children you have. <laughs> Meaning if you had any more... The fabric of society would start to break down. <laughs> See, I'm kind of fascinated by monkeys. Monkeys and small primates. I I like uh, um, there's a there's a tiny bush baby that I follow on Instagram called Pizza Toru, and he's amazing. He's like the cross between he's a cross between a monkey and a cat. He's like the perfect. And a bird, maybe, because he's so, like, he moves so quickly. But he's very cute. I like him anyway. Maybe he's not for you. Try him. Maybe he's, maybe he, maybe he'll warm your, your, your heart. 
Your monkey intolerant heart. <laughs> so we were talking about Kesho uh, is 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 a little fan of the movie uh, uh, The Lost Boys. Now, is it is it vampire movies in general, or is it Kiefer Sutherland, or is it that movie in particular, or is it Corey Haim and or Corey Feldman? Or is it the guy, uh, the saxophone guy, the shirtless saxophone guy, which I'm, I know you know his name. I know John Hamm played him once on, on Saturday Night Live. I, w- I want to know what it is about that movie. We might have discussed this, but I'm, I'm fascinated. It's Sutherland and vampires. Oh, Corey's. Tim Capello. I think they called him Sergio on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> like that was the uh, the curse. You're the curse of Sergio. And anytime like you'd start doing something, Sergio would break through the wall with the um, with the saxophone and no shirt on. Okay, so it's Sutherland and the vampires. Okay, but are you are you? Particular, particularly uh, uh, into vampire movies now? Like, like, is there a hierarchy of vampire movies? Because there's been some good ones. There have been some bad ones. I'm trying to think of some good ones. Uh. 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 <laughs> I'm trying to blank. We were talking about we were talking about Blade, uh, and I think I think except for Blade Three, I think they all have m- some merits. They're not not one of them is a solid film. I'm sorry, I accidentally called Blade movies films. What we do in the shadows is pretty funny. Oh, Amanda is gonna pop in for one second. Yeah, I liked Blade 2 because the guy who played P- Prince Nuwata was in it, and it was directed by Guillermo del Toro, so uh, I'm a little bit biased. You know, it's nice about Amanda not talking. She, she doesn't nag all the time. It's great. <laughs> she never nags me, ever, about anything. If anything, it's, she's probably waiting for me to get a sore throat, so I'll stop talking. <laughs> what about the one with um that one guy with the face? Thank you, Amanda. Thank you for... Oh, are you talking about Interview of the Vampire? That one had some, some decent decent parts to it. See, I kept telling Amanda that she should just text me all day today. Intellectual vampires as opposed to gory vampires. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't like From Dust Till Dawn either. You're not missing anything, Amanda. But it's weird calling her Amanda. I just see her name. Mandy. Oh, Let the Right One In is really good. Good call. Yeah, I didn't like the American version. Oh my gosh, yeah. You know, I think I was talking to Amanda about about Keanu Reeves in in Bram Stoker's Dracula. It's pretty awful. Although Winona Ryder too is not great with her fake British accent. Um, Gary Oldman's armor his Vlad armor is pretty awesome in that movie Bill, wait wait back up a second there's going to be a Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure 3 is that something that the world needs 
I mean, it might be great, but it might also be a train wreck. I mean, now that Keanu's like 60 years old. Hello, CMH. Oh boy, I'm getting Slack notifications. What is going on? It's, it's almost like work is happening here. Sorry about that. Um, okay. <laughs> They're not work slacks, okay. <laughs> Getting slack notifications of jokes. <laughs> I like that Steve is watching the, watching the stream from his house like five miles away and is also sending memes over Slack, over our work Slack channel. <laughs> He's all about, uh, all about, uh, multitasking that one. This is a bee. Amanda called him a grumble bee. This is actually Amanda's idea. Well, it was her idea to do a bee, a grumpy bee. The rest is all me. Sorry about that, guys. There's more to it than this. There's a grumble bee. Like a bumblebee, get it? Get it? Now go write your own captions. <laughs> so, I don't know if you guys saw on my... Uh, on my Instagram story the other day, I showed a, a video of a fish. My um, my daughter and I went down to the lake, and there's like a little stream that goes that goes in from the lake. And we saw a couple of fish, and uh, they were shad, which are which are kind of a bait fish. They're not very big. Um, and they were swimming upstream already to spawn, which is really, really early. So, um, oh, Hannah, thank you about the drawing today. Um, so the fish are swimming really slow because usually after they spawn, they die. And not all of them, just, just a majority of them. And they were getting really close to shore. And I was joking with my daughter, who's game for anything? Who she's usually just like, okay, whatever. Um, I said, you should grab one. She goes, I go, they're close enough to shore, you should grab one. And she tried at first and she touched one. And then two seconds later, she turned around and just reached down in the water and totally grabbed one. Here, I have a picture of my phone. And the, the best was when she grabbed the fish, she, she said, and I quote, here, I'll show you the video first. Hold on, let me, uh, let me fix this. So there's the fish. There's the fish if you missed it. Um, she grabs the fish and she says, I'm awesome. <laughs> that's what she that's what she said. So uh, so there you go. That was what we did the other day. Um, so she's a chip off the old block. <laughs> like her dad. Constant fisher person. Uh, hello Sophie. So Sophie so yes, Chloe is awesome, but I just love how confident she is and how uh, how just she feels perfectly fine saying I'm awesome, which is I think really good uh, something that's really good for a, a twelve year old girl to have this day and age. So now to be fair, the water was very cold and the fish were moving very slow and they were already compromised, but it was pretty awesome. So oh hey, Alex is hosting. Alex Purdy is hosting the channel, so that is pretty awesome. Thank you, Alex. Um, yeah, she has she has very healthy self esteem, and she she just does whatever she wants, and she's got a lot of interests, and she goes for it on everything, and she's just got a really good attitude. So, um, whenever I'm feeling like. Uh, I have too many things going on. That girl just makes things going on in her life. She's the busiest person I know, and she's 12. 
Oh, you'll find out why the, why the bee is upset. Not there yet. Yeah, not not many people would go out of their way to to grab a fish. I mean, she was like she wasn't just content just touching the fish. She had to she had to catch it. And she was very upset cuz she was like, "Well, we should go home and get our our fishing rods." But Shad won't Shad are very hard to catch on 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 rod reel. So, uh I was like, "Oh, it'd be kind of a waste of time anyway." And then she was determined that she was going to catch one. Second try, too. She just went went for it. And she stepped right in the water, didn't care. The water's probably, you know, 42 degrees. And it's, uh, and she dropped her phone in the, in the lake, too. Um, luckily the phone was fine. But, yeah, she just didn't care about anything else. Just, I'm going to catch this fish. <laughs> Sometimes things are important. So also over the weekend, we celebrated my son's 17th birthday, which is really surreal. It's very strange to have a 17 year old. He's not 17 technically until two days from now, but uh, he was here over the weekend. Um, and my parents came down to visit, so we wanted to, we wanted to celebrate over the weekend. So he's, he's going to be 17 years old. Don't tell anybody. I may or may not have uh, given him his first driver's lessons around the block, driving lessons around the block over the weekend. And they may have not been legal, but I'm not saying they were or not. Yeah, I'm so old. I'm getting older by the day. So I went to the uh, I went to the bank to go pick up his present, and I wanted to give him some money, but I asked for it all in singles. And the woman at the bank said, well, what's this for? And I said, no, I offered it up. I said, uh, it's for my son's birthday. The woman at the bank wasn't going to be that, that, that pushy or, or prying. So I said, it's for my son's birthday, my son's 17th birthday. And she said, you're not old enough to have a 17-year-old. I'm like, oh, if, that, if only that were true. Um, but I told her it was for his birthday, and I got it all in singles. And she said, boy, you're mean. And I said, well, I could, I could just not give it to him, which would be more mean. So, <laughs> oh, thank you, Amanda. It was legal. So I totally legally drove my, had my son drive around the block a couple times, pulled into some driveways, backed up. So Steve, uh, since you live the closest, um, watch the roads. Be careful. Yeah, all money does spend, and it's way, way more uh, impressive when you have a stack of money that's two inches tall. So, um, even though it wasn't that much money, it looked impressive. So that was that was my point. Amanda, thank you for checking on that. <laughs> it was nice in the nickels. I think Chloe had mentioned something about giving it to him in pennies or something, because she's his sister, and they're allowed to be jerks to each other. Just perma jerks. <laughs> I think it'd be kind of funny, actually, but it's like here I presented you with a problem. <laughs> Happy birthday. But the best thing about his birthday is. So we, we took him out for, for lunch. We went to this really great uh, Vietnamese restaurant that has really awesome uh, pho soup. And um, it's one of his favorites around. So we went there and um, he, I asked him what kind of cake he wanted and he got a, a, a gold rum cake. So uh, when we went, when he was like five or six, we went to the Bahamas and he we got a tortuga rum cake while we were down there and he ate the whole thing it was just like a, one of these little ones um so oh <laughs> bye amanda so uh we got one of these little tortuga rum cakes it was about this big and he ate the whole thing he loved it and they have they have a, enough rum in them that they're a little bit boozy so uh so ever since then he's loved those those kind of cakes so I learned how to make them and last year's was just way way too boozy 
I think it had like, uh, I think it had a cup and a half of rum in it. So this year we, we, we cut it back to one cup. So, uh, so he got a rum cake and now we have, we, we're still eating it. We didn't eat the whole thing over the weekend, but it was, it was delightfully boozy. Yes, it was on my story. Um, but the, the thing I did screw up was it called for three quarters of a cup of butter and it got a cup of butter. So no, wait, it called for, it called for a cup of butter and it got a cup and a half of butter. <laughs> so, uh, it was a little bit too much butter, but it still worked and it was still good. Nobody complained. So, uh, so yeah, so now that our arteries are all hardening from my son's birthday, we can recover slowly. Yeah, it was totally butter rum cake. Uh, and then, what else did we do? Oh, we watched Baby Driver, which if you guys haven't seen Baby Driver yet, and you're a fan of uh, Edgar Wright films, he made uh, Hot Fuzz and Shaun of the Dead and why I can't I think of the other one. Um, anyway, uh, Baby Driver is a very stylish, uh, funny, uh, witty action crime comedy. Um, and it, it's very endearing too. Like it's, um, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like the movie had a lot of heart. So if you like movies, if you like good movies, maybe give that one a watch. Oh, The World's End. That's what it was. Thank you, Beanie Bat couldn't think of that one did he not do ant-man or did he start doing ant-man and then stop i can't remember if he did all of ant-man i know that he was originally supposed to do ant-man but i don't know if he was the one who did it all the way through so the reason why this bee is grumpy is because there's icicles hanging off of this flower because it keeps getting warm here and then getting cold again so he's just He's just ready for spring. He's pissed. Okay. I know that he, I know he started Ant Man. Like he was supposed to do Ant Man. Okay. See. Okay. My my uh, my sources were right on that one. <laughs> that would have been a fun Ant Man though. I think it would have been maybe a little more interesting than than that one. Oh yeah, speaking of uh, Marvel movies um, or Marvel in general, Amanda and I are watching and in oh yeah, Scott Scott Pilgrim is amazing. That's actually one of my favorite movies. Um, and one of my son's favorite movies and he loved uh, Baby Driver too. So, um, yeah, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. I always say I wish there was there was a hundred movies just like it. But, um, so I, I'm, uh, no, he's upset because it's frozen. Um, I, the only thing I know about Marvel is, uh, is what I know of the movies. So I'm not a purist, so please, Steve, give me a break. Um, so I don't have any sort of frame of reference. I never read comic books when I was a kid. Um, I read a little bit of like image stuff in the nineties, but not enough to really know anything. So, um, we're watching the Punisher and I was ready to give up on that whole, all the Netflix Marvel series after the, the iron fist debacle and some of the cheesy third act stuff and, and Luke Cage. So, um, we started watching The Punisher, and A, it's super gritty. Like, it's really, really, really gritty. And we haven't, I think we're about maybe two-thirds through. And I kind of can't believe that it exists in the same, um, in the same universe as all those other ones. Like, like, even, 
Um, like, I really liked the story of Jessica Jones, but I can't get past the bad wire work and crappy effects. Um, it kind of takes me out of it. Like, I'd rather them just not have any of it. But um, I like the acting and I like the story. But, uh, boy, Punisher just is not in the same universe at all, but it's really, so far, um, I don't know the actor's name, but the guy, I, we keep calling him Shane, because he was on The Walking Dead. The guy who plays uh, Frank Castle is, is, is way more dimensional than, uh, than any of the other characters in those series so far, and I'm pleasantly surprised by that, so... Uh, if you're okay with violence and blood, um, give it a watch because it's it's got more depth than I expected. Yeah, but Iron Fist is pretty terrible. I have to admit, I, this is this is I'm gonna have to put up the old complaint on this one because listen, Iron Fist, the guy who they have playing him is so milk toast and so like such a wet blanket and. Uh, it just, you know, all, all, you know, I'm sure there's, there's some, I know Steve has some complaints, but, uh, it's just bad. Like, it's just, the dialogue is bad, this whole story is really dumb, it's just dumb. So, that's all I'm going to say. Who's the dude from Game of Thrones, Kesho? I don't, I don't remember John I don't remember the guy from Punisher being in Game of Thrones I know he's in The Walking Dead though he was also in Baby Driver oddly enough yeah I'm, I'm all about saying like uh, no guy in Iron Fist is in Game of Thrones which guy I'm trying to think of which guy it is Anyway, it's, you know, I'm all about, like, saying, oh, it's not for me, but it was pretty bad. It was pretty lame. And, like, Luke Cage, I liked most of it, but, like I said, some of the third act stuff, like, I think they, kill, they killed off a really awesome villain and brought in a pretty weak villain, so. See, I'm, I'm so, like, here, I'm going to have to look it up right now because I don't know. talking about oh david wenham is that who we're talking about is he one of the tyrells no i don't know anything guys finn jones oh he w oh okay the main character. Gotcha. See, I didn't recognize it without his, uh, without his beard. Plus, there's so many, um, there's so many seasons of Game of Thrones that, like, Amanda's watching it right now, and I'm, I, would, I don't know which season she's on. Three. Oh, she says three. <laughs> I don't remember back that far, so, um... So many of the things she's telling me, like, I don't even remember. So, I don't even remember him being in there. But thanks, guys. Okay. I, rem I remember him now. Thank you, Uncle Steve. But, like I said, skip Iron Fist, watch, watch Punisher. So, uh... Hello, Kirby! Uh, Easy Efro, are you still in the chat? I'm addressing Ethan directly. Yeah, I don't know if Derek's in here today. Ethan, I think you know what this means. Uh, I think it's time for Ethan's joke of the day. You got one on deck? <laughs> What do you got for us today? Better be a groaner. 
<laughs> you started this. You totally got called out in front of the class. I hope I'm not embarrassing you. <laughs> Actually, I hope I'm embarrassing you a little bit. Let me let me see if I remember. I told you I have a terrible memory, so let's see. It's the one you sent me today. I think I remember this one. Yeah, I think that one's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, maybe go with that one. It takes it's a thinker though. It takes a minute. Okay, the joke is, what do you call a chicken staring at lettuce? I'm good, Kirby. Thanks for asking. What do you call it, Ethan? Chicken sees a salad. Get it? Get it, guys? Get it? I think it was pretty, I think it was bad good. I think it was really, really bad good. I think it was this bad. Good job, Ethan. Well done. Um, okay, now listen, Shuby, Iron Fist and Kung Fury are two completely different things. Kung Fury is purposely bad, but funny. Iron Fist is trying to be cool, but is just bad. So there you go. <laughs> I know what kind of cheese is in my cheese, Kesho. It's nacho cheese. That's what kind of cheese, not your cheese. Yeah, see, you guys got it. Everybody, welcome. Nacho, uh, Dorito Ho. I almost said Nacho Ho. Dorito Ho. Welcome. You came in just in time for dad jokes. <laughs> Usually they're flowing. But we have, a. Uh, Easy E Fro here is uh, is our, our resident dad jokester. <laughs> I'm also a dad, but I rely on other people for jokes. My daughter usually has a ton on deck. My son has a bunch on, on deck usually too. But oh, Easy E Fro has one more. We're, are you guys ready for one more joke? I don't know if we can take one more. Let's do it anyway. Go for it, Ethan. Take the stage. Why did the salad go into the studio? I don't know, Ethan, why? Why did the salad go into the studio? To get some fresh beets. <laughs> I don't even know why I'm laughing. I don't know. Well done. Well done, Ethan. You're living up to your uh, your my expectations of you. Thank you. Thank you for being a solid contributor to the live stream. It's because of people like you that we keep this thing going. Yes, they're all wholesome jokes. We all, we like to keep it clean here. I've sworn a couple times on here and I've regretted every single time. I am laughing because it's that good. <laughs> no, I get to hear all of them. Ethan, Ethan runs them all by me first, so they're all good. You can throw throw them all out. I think they're they're all great. <laughs> uh, when are you and Chris Rannick touring your dad jokes around the country? Oh boy. I'm going to have to come up with a better way to memorize things if I'm going to do anything like that. I'm more of a, uh, I'm more of an improv comedian. I'm a, I'm a situational comic. 
Um, I think that you 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 know you have to keep kids entertained. So so a lot of the jokes come from them, but uh, but there's something really satisfying in telling a really really bad joke to a kid who just dies laughing at it. Like it's just the worst joke. But I found that um, I found that those uh, those jokes are actually really funny. <laughs> Hello, Bodie. Um, Hannah says I really like Kinder eggs. I just wanted you all to know. Well, we can't get them, so I've never had one. So I don't know what they I don't know what they're like. I've had Kinder chocolate, but I've never had a Kinder egg because. You know, those are illegal here. You know, you can get a... <laughs> There's lots of things that aren't illegal here, but you can't get a, a chocolate egg with a toy in it. Oh, we have them here now. They're the Italian version. What makes them Italian? And what makes them legal? Do they have the toy in them? I'm not even gonna entertain that one, but uh, Bodhi, I don't want to. I don't want to get into the uh, what I think about that. But I'll just say, yeah, that's kind of what I was thinking. <laughs> oh no, not that. So I've seen toys that come out of those things. Wait, the two halves of an egg, not a chocolate egg with a toy. And say, but that's not a. That's not a Kinder egg. That's a something else that they're calling a Kinder Egg. So tell me, I don't know if anybody here is from Europe, but I heard that um, purple Skittles in Europe are actually black currant flavored, not grape. Am I right about this? Is anybody, um, does anybody, uh, can anybody substantiate that? And I can tell you why. Okay, so black currant were actually illegal to grow in the United States um, because they carried uh, a type of fungus that was uh, fatal to white pine trees. And white pine trees are like the cash cow of. Um, of lumber trees in the US. So I think it was in the 1800s. Um, yeah, they outlawed growing black currant in the US. So there you go. That's why black currant isn't like really a, uh, a flavor here that we know because they don't grow them here. I've seen lots of like black currant imported flavored things, but. Um, there you go. Yeah, I thought that was an interesting bit of bit of trivia. I actually really like currant flavoring, but um, I've never actually eaten a black currant though. Let's see, is it a chocolate egg with a toy inside or the sweet cream and hazelnut half? So the, the one, the only one that I know of Kinder eggs are the, it's just a choc a chocolate egg and it has a little toy inside it. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I I like I'm I'm a big fan of uh of of collecting strange and unusual facts about things. Amanda is too. So um I don't know. I always like I like the idea that, you know, I'm I'm 42 and I and I'm constantly learning stuff that for some reason I should have known. Oh, black currant jam. That sounds awesome. I like that we have people from Australia here. That's that's awesome. We got people from all over the place in here. Not just boring old America. I mean, there's parts of America that are great. 
but I'm tired of it. <laughs> I want to get out of here. Canada. Canada would be just fine. Oh, Dorito, you're you're in Sweden? I love that there's zines in, in Australia, too. I realize it's a silly thing to say, but, like, that's really awesome. Oh, man, we have so many international folks here. Well, welcome. Currently, uh, Amanda and I were talking about how boring it is that old folks talk about the weather. I'm going to talk about the weather. Um, a couple days ago, we had like 52 degrees. It was really nice. I got to wear a hoodie outside. And uh, right now, we're having a, a whiteout snowstorm. And it's super windy. And it's, I think, 30 degrees again. So hence why I'm drawing this B because we keep getting these fake outs in the weather oh it's Red Jaro Jam welcome back You know, it's funny, I keep learning everybody, so Red Jar Jam, I didn't know your art until you mentioned it. Uh, Azeli Cat, I believe, is um, is somebody who posts a lot of my art on Instagram, but under a different name. And I'm terrible at remembering everybody's names and lining up what they do with their name. So as soon as I, as soon as I can tie something to your name, I usually remember you, so... <laughs> Goblin Willies. <laughs> oh, that's another thing I really like about Red Jaro Jam. Uh, he's very humble. <laughs> it's it's one of your it's one of your better qualities. <laughs> If you guys haven't checked out uh, Red Jar of Jams art, you should. You should do yourself a favor. If you don't have nightmares, go over and give yourself some. <laughs> yeah, I saw your pictures of uh, of Smidgen uh, on on tour. Those are pretty funny. The one of him by the pillow was pretty funny because he had to zoom in to see him. I don't know why I set myself up for all this fur. Yeah, draw fur on the live stream. That's a great idea. The humble grumble bee. So I haven't been able to figure out why the alert sounds aren't coming through. Uh, and the best I could figure out was that I have to I have to basically reinstall everything. I didn't have time to do that, and I kind of don't care. At some point, I might do it, but I'm not doing it right now. <laughs> so if you guys aren't hearing any sounds, I'm not looking up to see what's happening. So if there's, like, anything happening. Oh, thank you, Hannah. I just happened to look up when I noticed that Hannah was hosting. Thank you so much, Hannah. But um, since Amanda's not here, I can't keep track of everything at once. Well, thank you for hosting. I appreciate it. Yeah, see, look at that. We gave you some love anyway, even though you're big, you're big grumpy, grumpy turd. <laughs> but you always bring the bits. Always with the bits. Always with the cheers. Always with the good times. So I've been, uh, I've been three D modeling more. Uh, I started on another like a live project today 
and um, I will tell you that modeling things that are less detailed, like things that are smushy, things that are more baby-like, cute stuff, um, is much more difficult because it's har harder to hide the uh, the mistakes. Because <laughs> if it's like you know, think of a baby's face. You know, it's pretty flawless and smooshy. And then think of like, you know, a grandma's face. It's pretty wrinkly and lots of detail. So think think of it that way. Um, sorry, I made you think about babies and grandmas. Um, so it goes a little slower and I gotta be a little bit more careful and it's a little less fun. It's kind of like the difference between drawing a kaiju and drawing like a cute sea monster. Like, um, the kaiju are way more fun to mess around and you know i feel like i'm getting my hands dirty and i can kind of make up the rules as i go whereas the ones that are really cute i kind of have to have a little more restraint um and make sure that all the lines are in the right place so 3d modeling those characters are are pretty much the same uh are pretty much the same oh my goodness beanie bat i know of your work how did I not? Beanie Bat, okay, everybody should be uh, following Beanie Bat also. Fantastic work. Great customs. Really nice. I am so sorry, Beanie Bat. Um, <laughs> wait, which account was flagged, Rajara Jam? Your Instagram account or uh, your Twitch account? Oh, wait, I'm looking at Bodie, too. Sorry. Oh, Bodie! Oh, great stuff! Oh, look at those little zines! Oh, man. Okay, this is great stuff, too. I love this stuff. Wow, why are you guys hanging out in my stream? You guys are awesome. No, this stuff's great. Oh, man. I'm, I'm like, all humbled that you guys are here can't farm bits anymore oh you farming too many <laughs> you're an illegal bit farm going he finally caught you see i had no idea that i had so many talented artists hanging out in here okay let's talk about this word talent because i think i had it all wrong so Ever since I was a kid, I always thought that when somebody says, oh, you have talent, I always thought that it meant that it was like, oh, you were born with that. That's what I thought that it meant. But I did read that some there was an argument that, um, and maybe somebody can look up the actual definition of the word talent. There's an argument that the word talent is something that, like, uh, you, uh, you hone. So I always thought that was skill. I heard a couple of people arguing about this because I was like, so I was like, oh, you're so talented. It's like, well, I wasn't really born with this. I like, I had a proclivity towards it, but I worked really hard. But I don't know if that's what that implies. So, and I don't know if that's what people mean. So this is all about intent. So I was confused. Okay, I feel talent is innate in the person and the skill is the thing you hone. See, that's what I always thought too. Okay, so, so Kesha says talent is a special natural ability or aptitude. So, um, yeah, Bodhi, it's the same thing. Okay, so that, so my argument is right. So basically, like, you have an, I had an inclination to art when I was a, a child, but I wasn't like born with the ability. And, and having, and I've probably talked about this before, I used to, um, I have two kids and I've been around a lot of kids and I, I used to um, uh, judge kids art contests and, I, and it, you would, I would judge them, the ages range from uh, kindergarten all the way up to 12th grade, uh, which is 16, 17, 18 year olds. So we're talking five year olds all the way up to, uh, to 18 year olds and all the little kids that entered had amazing art. Like it was really, really, really amazing. 
and their their imagination was great and the things that they were doing was really really interesting and then they hit a certain age it's about second grade they're about seven where they start like going into their interests they start uh they start being told what they should be doing they start listening to other people they start having fears and anxieties and it starts getting it it starts getting worse so you start seeing less kids interested in art and less kids entering and then you start seeing uh less uh less imagination things are starting to get a little more stifled um, but there's still those kids that stand out, but you can, but there's a really, really noticeable difference. So I feel like, I feel like kids are pretty innately, uh, uh, not, they're interested in being creative. And then at some, it starts getting funneled at a certain age. So, um, that's a good point too, Rajar Jam. I can tell everyone I can teach them how to draw, but I can't teach them what to draw or when to draw or when they should feel like drawing. That's another good one too. <laughs> I tell everyone to give up. I want less competition. There you go. That's a good way to do it. I don't know. See, I always thought when people were like, oh, you're so talented. I'm like, I like spent 35 years learning how to do this. So not really. But thanks, I guess. Or my favorite one is, um, uh, I can't even draw a straight line. Do you think I can draw a straight line, really? Do you think that being an artist means you can draw a straight line? <laughs> I always say, well, an architect can, I can't. Yeah, I think so too, Bodhi, I agree with that. It's, it's more of a self-comforting thing than a dismissal of the abilities. I think so too. Which is usually why I don't get upset at people because I think people often don't know what they're saying when they when they say things or like they don't really take into account what it's gonna mean to other people. Like I always, okay, the artists in the room will know this. Will know this one. Uh, funneled by society, yes, by their parents, by school, by their interests, by sports or whatever they decide to get into. I think, I think they just start losing the uh the want the desire to give time to art that's what what i mean mick is um let's see i have a cynical perspective to them using the word talent instead of skill um no like when the artists here will understand this one when somebody when when somebody's drawing something or they post something and the first thing somebody says oh it reminds me of blank when people say that, they don't mean to be, uh, they're not trying to be dismissive and they're not trying to be uh, thoughtless, um, but they kind of don't, they might not have the same perspective as an artist and they might not have, um, they might not possess the right kind of empathy to know what that means to an artist. Um, so yeah, Red Jar Jam, your stuff looks like Adventure Time. I'm sure you hear that all the time where it's like that, that can be discouraging and people don't, aren't trying to be discouraging, but like when you're trying to blaze your own trail, uh, that's really, really, really disheartening. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I don't get it anymore, but like Amanda and I would get, she's still might get it i don't know we don't really talk to people much anymore <laughs> uh would get the the oh it reminds me of tim burton really why does it remind you of tim burton because you saw a thing that didn't look like anything else so you decided that's the only thing that's your only frame of reference which most of the time yeah that's what it is they don't have any other frame of references for something that's peculiar so there you go sizzla says i mean do you tell a quarterback he's talented when he throws a well-planned pass to receiver no uh, that's that's a really good actually that's a good parallel to a sports ball thing um which is actually great because i think i need more of that i need to be more open-minded to sports <laughs> well okay i think athletes are uh work very hard at what they're doing i think fandoms behind sports are a little ridiculous so there you go uh, what's a compliment that you've received that made you really happy to hear oh my goodness so many i hear them every day actually um, 
I get a lot of people that just say like things like, oh, uh, I look forward to these every day. These make my day or I, I had a bad day and this cheered me up. Um, I've gotten some really, really, really long in-depth emails from people that were suffering from from anxiety and depression and um, and from uh, bipolar disorder and and like things that the, the, their, their messages were basically like, uh, the thing that you're doing helps me get through the day and has pulled me out of dark places and things like that. And that's, you know, I sit here in this house and, and don't leave for a couple of days sometimes. And I have a very, Amanda and I have a very small bubble and, uh, and it's easy to lose perspective on the fact that you know what we're doing has any reach at all and when i hear stuff like that it kind of snaps me back into focus and kind of shows me that like because i it's easy to kind of not feel important doing silly things like what we do for a living um it kind of makes you feel like oh, what am i really doing but things like that kind of remind you that like what we do has some value um to other people beyond us just making merchandise, you know? So like, that's, that's, um, I don't know. Th those are always good reminders. Um, and I'm, I'm always humbled by them. So thank you. That was a very good question. Uh, let's see, not saying you're wrong, but fans tell quarterbacks good pass instead of recognizing all the work and hours that go into making that pass happen. I'm not disagreeing with you there. <laughs> I'm I'm just saying that I I'm not talking about how the how they uh, react to the players. It's the the uh, the fake fighting over nothing. You know, like I live in a town that uh, they're very wrapped up in their sports teams, and they very much hate other cities that are nearby because of their sports teams. That's what I'm talking about. Like there's this rivalry, like actual rivalry, like throwing things at people's cars if they have the wrong sticker on their car. It's the dumbest thing ever. That's what I'm talking about. Um, so there you go. That's what I mean. Okay, I guess for me, when I say talent, I think more of the creative ability that goes along with the skill. I hope I don't offend anyone early because I don't realize it does take a lot of work. Uh, oh, because I do realize it takes a lot of work. I, again, this is a conversation that I'm having. Um, I'm not. I'm not telling anybody that they're wrong. I'm just saying they might not have thought about that. They might not have thought about the perspective from the artist. Like artists, it's really easy to get discouraged as an artist. Even even when you've had some success, it it is easy to like go. Like this morning, the drawing I did this morning. Um, I had to go into Photoshop to fix some things because I was just like, my brain and my hand were not syncing up and I was just like, I don't know what I'm doing. And clearly I know what I'm doing. I've been doing this for a long time, but uh, it's for some reason, I was just having an off day and it was just like, forget it. I don't want to put this in. And then I got to put it out in front of everybody, you know, and that p other people don't see what I did, but, uh, or see what I'm looking at. But I'm putting it out in front of other artists that I respect too, you know, not just the fans. Like, um, and there's a lot of artists that are way better than me. So that's another thing you just kind of got to get over it and just put it out there. So, yeah, we're all sensitive jerks. I think that's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> Let's see. I think so, saying someone's talented is just an easy way for someone to sit, someone to recognize all that awestruck and mind blowing skill that just happened in front of them that's actually really nice so there you go. <laughs> that that that's that sums it up pretty well let's see i think connecting with an artist whose work expresses feelings you can't emote yourself when you have depression or mental health issue is important yeah i think so too it's it's i think art is one of those things that just art and music are those things that like really really touch on those nerves um yeah it's it well also, I mean, I, I, I think I've talked about this before, but like, if you go back to the early morning scribbles and if you go back into my, like my paintings, um, they weren't happy. They weren't cute. They were, they were 
very moody and dark and um and that really reflected where I was in my life and I made a conscious decision to kind of like try to cheer myself up which in turn like I was kind of forcing myself I mean it's like it's not healthy to go like okay everything's fine like that's not healthy sometimes you gotta face things and you gotta you gotta realize that you're in a bad place and you gotta try to fix it in a way beyond like okay I'm just gonna put a smile on my face like sometimes you just can't put a smile on your face sometimes it's you gotta just be in it and you gotta get through it and I always I always and it's really dumb and it's probably probably you know cliche but I always say like the only way out is through and and a lot of time it's true um not that you should suffer but sometimes like you gotta deal with it and burying it is not the best way to do it but for me doing the drawings that were a little more you know light-hearted were good for me they were helping me so that's what helped me I mean, that's why, why I've continued them is because like this guy's grumpy but it's funny you know it's not it's not dark or anything um, and I definitely have those days like I've been going through some stuff lately that you know it's heavy stuff and I've been having a hard time dealing with it and um, I don't want it to come out in my art you know, I want to, I want to still try to maintain the positivity that I have and, and try to keep, keep going in a, in a positive trajectory. So I'm choosing to like, not make things that are sad or grumpy or depressing. <laughs> I laugh so I don't cry. Yeah, that happens too. I I used to listen to, actually I still do, listen to a lot of podcasts with comedians because I found this like really interesting parallel between what artists go through and comedians. I mean, comedians are artists in their own right also. Um, and I just found that it's like, a, there's a lot of parallels there. There's a lot of, there's a lot of thoughtfulness and there's a lot of what I, you know, some people may call navel gazing, but a lot of, um, I guess, sort of like going inward and thinking a lot about your place in the world and what you're doing and, um, and how it impacts other people. And that's the same thing with, with, with comedians and a lot of comedians, like they're technicians, man. They know, they know the structure of their art form and they know, you know, the structure of their jokes and what hits where and what works and what doesn't work and and the, there's a lot to that and plus they got to get up in front of people who are saying make me laugh and that's real like volatile and it can go wrong really quickly and I would never want to do that I would never want to be a comedian but the mindset's really really closely related to art I'm sorry I'm just rambling guys getting so heavy in here tonight so I'm gonna get off of this subject and talk about video games for a minute so um, I played Grand Theft Auto 5 the other day and I discovered something that I didn't realize I don't play online because I don't I don't want to play with other people because I'm solitary uh, I discovered that you can steal a fire truck that has a functioning uh, a water cannon on the roof that is aimable. And if you aim it at somebody riding a motorcycle or someone standing on the side of the road, they go flying. So, so, uh, so I'm driving down the freeway in my stolen fire truck and um, <laughs> and I see these two these two cops standing on the side of the freeway. Oh, good night, Hannah. Thank you for being part of the good community. Yes. No, the frozen flower is what he's upset about because it's frozen because it's so cold out. Um, but uh, 
so I see these two cops standing next to their motorcycles on the side of the freeway, and Amanda's like, oh, you have to. So I point the water cannon at them and shot them just, like, right off their feet, and they went flying. And, of course, that gets my wanted level up, so they start chasing me. And I'm in a giant armored uh, fire truck going super slow, and they can't do anything to me. There's a million cop cars following me down the road. And, uh, and I'm knocking people off of their bikes and left and right with the, with the water cannon. And it's like the slowest, most anticlimactic uh, car chase ever. And then eventually I, I make it onto the beach and there's all these people having, um, there's all these people having uh, campfires on the beach. So I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll run up to them with the fire truck and I'll put out their fires. And they're all standing around the fires. And I, I blow the, the water cannon at them, and instead of it blowing out the fire, it knocks them into the fire and then lights them on fire and burns them to a crisp. So I've effectively, with a fire truck, caught someone on fire <laughs> and burned them to death. So um, hilarity ensued. And then I went to try to steal a, a jet from the airport, and I got shot down by a uh, helicopter so yeah so that was my little adventure with gta but i had no idea that the fire truck had a functioning water cannon so that was fun oh thanks so much uh linek linek i hope i'm saying that properly everybody welcome linek we got a, a, a pretty nice group of people here, Linek. Oh no, not a birthday cake thing. Hide. Well, actually, like maybe, maybe pretend like feign interest so you can get some cake. That's always good. He is a grumble bee. Jaded cicada. You nailed it. Hey man, I I will always like deal with with awkward social situations if there's cake involved. I did I worked in the office for many, many years. I worked at a, I worked in an office for almost thirteen years. And it seemed like there was a birthday every day there. It was crazy. It was also a uh it was also a uh, a social expressions company, meaning it, we made greeting cards. So it was like a holiday company. So Oh well, yeah, there was there was birthdays abound every single day. Oh don't don't worry, Jade Emerald. No worries for being late. We're still here. I'm still rambling. So I don't know I don't know if you guys are big video game fans, and I'm not really a big video game fan. I just like playing sometimes to pass the time. We've already talked about Horizon Zero Dawn, but I'm looking for my next game. And I'm hesitant to jump into Monster Hunter World because it seems so dense and the learning curve seems pretty high. And I'm really, really impatient. So I don't know. If anybody's played Horizon Zero Dawn and Monster Hunter World, please tell tell me. Uh, it's for PS4. Please tell me if you've played both of those, and please tell me uh, how you compare them. And if you liked Horizon Zero Dawn, because I loved Horizon Zero Dawn. Has the most awkward name video game. Actually, the most awkward name is... Uh, oh, what is the name of that? There's a game that Amanda plays. Oh, I'm not going to be able to remember the name of it. I'll think of it. Bravely Default... That's the, the weirdest name for a video game. Yeah, the uh, people seem to really be super stoked on Monster Hunter World. I know it's a I know that franchise has been around for a really long time, and it's been like a handheld game uh, in Japan for a really long time. So uh, yeah, I don't play games a lot either. But when I do, like I want to have something that's like not gonna like. I get really anxious when I go into um, when I go into like quests and stuff, especially if they take a long time. And I've heard taking down monsters takes like a half an hour or an hour. So, uh, gang beasts? No, I don't know what that means. 
Yeah, I, I, exactly, Duke Blazer. Welcome, Duke Blazer, by the way. Um, I, uh, of course, that's why I, I would be into it. The monsters look amazing. Even if you're not planning on playing the game or you're not really interested, you guys should look up a Monster Hunter World um, trailer just to see the monsters and to see the environment. Because, I mean, it, it's like, it's one of those games that if they made a movie out of it, it'd be an awesome movie to watch. So... You should check it out, just just for eye candy. Thank you, Zelly Cat. Appreciate it. Yeah, I can't, I'm still like. Well, okay. So here's the really funny thing. I showed I showed the the uh, the trailer to uh, my girlfriend Amanda and to my kids and my daughter. The first thing she saw was there's these little. You have these little um, like familiars that follow you around. They're like they help you in the hunt, and they're called palicos, and they're little cats that like wear like battle gear and stuff, and you can customize your cat. And that almost sold them entirely. So. Oh, they're like, you can customize your cat. So, yeah, my daughter's like, if you don't play it, I'm going to get it. So, there you go. Oh, hello, Mom. Is it Mom? Or is that, uh, is it my mom or is that, uh, or is that Brinley? Oh, God of War looks pretty awesome, too. See, that's... Well, what I'm really waiting for is Red Dead Redemption 2, so. Ewok Love is now hosting. Thank you so much. I am drawing a B. Yeah, actually, the reason why I got the PS4 was was for Red Dead Redemption, and, uh, and I got Horizon Zero Dawn to tide me over, and I ended up really liking that game, which everybody here knows that I called Red Dead Redemption. <laughs> uh, so... Everybody, welcome my mom. TLRJDR is my mother. Who just recently found out she's allergic to bees. This wasn't because of you, mom. <laughs> yeah, you know what, Beanie Bat? I, I don't know if you heard, but it took me seven years to finish Red Dead Redemption because I was stuck in a spot. And, okay, here's the reason why. Here's the real reason why. I... It was sort of the first open world newer game that I had ever played, and I didn't understand the the um, the quest system in that game. Like, I didn't know anything, and I went back and I started playing it, and I just started like kind of getting into it after like five years of not playing it, and then I'm like, wait, I have like a thousand dollars in animal pelts to sell. <laughs> I had no idea. I'd just been like hunting the whole time. And I had all this money, and I got I got myself some new horses, and and then I and then I beat it in like another three months after that. But, um, but that game was amazing. I loved that game. Oh, Derek, it's okay. It's okay that you're late. We understand. But anyway, um, oh man. So the only thing I haven't done, Beanie Bat, in in Red Dead Redemption is uh, I haven't beat like the like like the gambler's dice or the um, uh, what is it? what is it? liar's dice and the like the arm wrestling stuff. Like I get too stressed out playing those things because they're too much like like real card games and things. So, uh, but if I can go hunt animals and things, yeah, I'm all for it. It's a grumble bee, Mom. He's grumpy because uh, cause it's not spring yet. Because it was like 50 degrees the other day. And now it's winter again. But you guys are probably getting more snow than we are. I saw that you guys had a winter advisory up there. We're in the Midwest, if, anybody's at, if anybody wonders. I'm in Ohio and my mom's in uh, Michigan. 
But I'm really looking forward to Red Dead 2. It, it, it looks amazing from what I've seen. Um, but if it, even if it's just more of the same, I'll be very happy. Because I really like that, that story. The, the thing I always joke about, Amanda and I always joke about the, the, the drunken uh, trumpet player in Mexico. Just the, the soundtrack is just a, a constant drone of a trumpet player. And he's just really getting into it. Oh man, six inches of snow. Ugh. Yeah, the the snow. I'm I'm really done with winter. Like I, I know it's only January, but like I want to go fishing. I want to go outside. I want to go hiking. Not that like it snow really stopped me before, but it's been so gross and so cold out here, and we have to drive to all the places we go hiking. That it's just been sort of prohibitive. So. But we're going to Florida next week, so that'll be a little bit nicer. Yeah, rain can get kind of miserable too, especially when it causes flooding and stuff. There's been so much crazy weather this year. Oh yeah, you know what, Linac? I uh, I used to skate when I was when I was a kid, uh, up until I was about sixteen. And anytime there was like a patch of, of dry outside on the street, I would just I'd run out there with my skateboard and and skate as much as I could. I feel you. I understand. Chris did not get a haircut. This is Chris's natural hair. My hair is actually really curly, and I just didn't feel like doing anything with it. So, uh, yeah, so that's what my hair looks like. I usually, like, like make it super straight, but my hair is actually really curly and wavy like that. Um, let's see. Uh, Orlando, Florida? Yes. Uh, we're going to be in the, the middle part of the state visiting uh, Amanda's folks. Um, I don't know exactly where they are, but they are, I believe that they are east, no, west of Orlando. So we will be, we will be down there for a few days. <laughs> yes, I would come home with broken bones. My mom is right. I hurt myself many times skateboarding. Much to my mother's chagrin. I was a very fragile child. But I went for it anyway. <laughs> oh, nice, Duke Blazer. Yeah, see, it'll be nice uh, going to Florida. I used to live down in Sarasota for about seven years. So uh, I know all about Florida. But we're going to take a tiny mini vacation. Go visit... Amanda's parents cat might hit up Disney World for a day so oh football traffic that's the worst kind of traffic oh that's crazy see my mom is on right now and the, oddly enough they are actually going to be in Florida at the exact same time as us and we are actually going to see them down there so that's pretty funny. Oh, thanks for thanks for hosting, Dorito. Yeah, I feel like I feel like if you're gonna start skateboarding or if you're a skateboarder at all, you just have to know you're gonna get hurt. Just it's just part of it. Not a fun part. But uh, yeah, I have I have many injuries now that I'm now that I'm an, an aging person. Uh, I have many injuries that I'm starting to feel a lot more. But I also have arthritis, so they could have something to do with each other. I don't know. But yeah, those injuries in my ankles, I'm definitely feeling, especially when it gets cold. <laughs> yeah, my parents are going without without me. 
And I'm just gonna meet him there. All right, this guy's getting pretty close to done. I think he looks pretty good. I think it came out okay. Well, I want to thank all you guys for hanging out. This was a good one. I appreciate you guys hanging out. And we had some new people in here. So welcome to the new people. I hope you come back uh, on Thursday. Uh, I do, uh, I do something called, a little something called, it's Kaiju Day! So, if you want to come back on Thursday, and run a Kaiju Monster, uh, every Thursday, uh, at 8.30, same place, um, so, uh, I'll be back, hopefully you'll be back, and if you guys want to follow me on Instagram, it's right here, Chris Raniak on Instagram. Uh, you can shop at Bindlewood.com. If you guys aren't already signed up for the mailing list, go to Bindlewood.com right now and sign up for the mailing list on the contact page because you will get notifications about new sales coming up. We don't spam you. We'll send out like one a month. Uh, or you can support me over on Patreon. Um, I think that's about it, guys. Thank you, Ethan, for the joke tonight. Thank you, uh, Kesho, for modding. Uh, thank you, Hannah. I know you already left. Uh, and thank you to all the new folks here. Welcome again, uh, and hopefully uh, we'll see you back here again. Uh, it's a good time. Oh, also, uh, we have a Facebook group. If you're interested in joining, send an email or a whisper to Kesho81 in the chat, and she will uh, hook you up. Send her your email that's attached to your Facebook account. So, anyway, I think that's enough. You guys have an awesome night, um, and have a good week, and I will see you on Thursday. Okay, bye, everybody. Bye.